So much for the beginning. Uh, chapter two concerns the presidents. Uh, I uh, didn't have, I felt uh, obligated to write this chapter. It wasn't, a it wasn't fun writing it, but uh, uh, nevertheless, presidents uh, are important to the history of our university. Uh, the, uh, uh, the reason I didn't have a great deal of fun writing was simply because uh, so much of it is uh, you know, uh, biographical vignettes. Uh, but uh, uh, in any case, um, presidents are important to the history of the university. We have buildings named after presidents. In recent times, presidents uh, set the agenda. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the themes of this, uh, uh, this chapter. One of the, I mentioned the biographical vignettes. Uh, in the beginning of the chapter is in fact an overview of the development of the office. Uh, it's really not until 1909 when William Oxley Thompson, for whom this uh, library is named, uh, has the title of uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer of the University. The, the trustees actually rewrote their bylaws. Uh, prior to that time, uh, presidents uh, were not chief executives. In fact, uh, uh, the first two presidents uh, did not sit uh, with the Board of Trustees at their meetings. Uh, they were considered the uh, uh, first amongst the faculty, uh, but not chief executives. All that changed with William X. and Thompson. But I was, uh, uh, there's a, uh, 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 an enjoyable quote at the beginning of the, uh, the book from uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, who had the misfortune of chairing a search committee for a uh, president. And uh, let me give you some of his, uh, his words. Uh, we are looking for a man of fine appearance, of commanding presence, one who will impress the public. He must be a fine speaker of public assemblies. He must be uh, a great scholar and a great teacher. He must be a preacher. Also, as some think, he must be a man of winning manners. He must have tact so that he could get along with and govern the faculty. He must be popular with the students. He must also be a man of business training, a man of affairs, and he must be a great administrator. Gentlemen, there is no such man. <laughs> <laughs> More than a hundred years later, a modern search committee could add several requirements to this already lengthy list. The idea of candidate should have a talent for courting private donors, uh, for representing the university to governmental agencies, for advancing cultural and racial diversity, uh, and for inspiring winning athletic programs which recruit young people who excel as athletes, students, and citizens. Uh, finally, a president should be equally impressive in many settings uh, from commencements to small parties. Uh, so, uh, anyway, each, uh, uh, the rest of the chapter uh, gives a biographical vignette about each president and the major issues and challenges that, uh, that, they, uh, that they face. Chapter three, I had uh, more fun uh, uh, writing about, uh, and that, because it involves some decision making, on, more decision making on my part. While the university, of course, has changed much in its, uh, its history, the pace of change has not always been the same. And so I designated a chapter in which I uh, point to five turning points, which I consider to be times at which the pace of change accelerated on this campus. You can uh, challenge, debate, uh, those turning points, I wanted to keep it to a small number, five, uh, simply because you know, chapters can only be so many pages in length. Uh, and uh, five uh, uh, liberated me or enabled me to, uh, 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 to, to write a decent uh, chapter. Uh, anyway, my five, when you read for the book. Uh, turning points are important for understanding the history of OSU. A handful of times or events have quickened the pace of change on the campus and deserve special attention. Five pivotal events, and I'll go into these in some detail in the book, are uh, Trustee Rutherford, Rutherford B. Hayes' resolution of a rift between agricultural leaders in Ohio in 1887. I said at the beginning that one of the reasons why we have 
uh, we are here, why the Morrill Act uh, funds went to one institution was because of agriculture. Powerful constituency in the state, okay? The agricultural constituency, by the record, was not happy with the university dropping agriculture uh, from its name. Uh, and so uh, there is, that's important because one of the aspirations <coughs> of the university in this period is a uh, uh, funding from the state for, to support higher education. There was no tradition, no precedent in, uh, for a regular subsidy from the state of Ohio for universities that are chartered by the state, even so-called public ones. So, but to get that, to get that subsidy requires legislative support. And having spurned, uh, not, certainly not deliberately, uh, agriculture, it was extremely difficult. Which leads me to a related second turning point, the Heisel Act of 1891. Now when this was passed, uh, volume one of the University History uh, series says, uh, this is the official University History series, uh, says, uh, quote, the name of Heisel shall live forever. Now I'm not aware of any Heisel Hall, Heisel Street, uh, <laughs> but Heisel was still important because the Heisel Act of 1891 was the first time that the state of Ohio provided an annual tax to support the operating, uh, the operations of the university, uh, namely maintenance, hiring people, hiring faculty, keeping our tuition low, uh, and the Heisel Act was extremely important in establishing that precedent. In fact, it served as our operating subsidy from the state of Ohio until about 1915 when it was replaced by an annual uh, appropriation uh, instead of a tax rate. Uh, World War II uh, transformed this campus uh, in, uh, in its diversity, in its uh, research breadth, uh, its international diversity, and uh, um, really uh, um, uh, there was no question in my mind that World War II uh, needed to be said. Also, of course, it was the uh, time in which federal engagement uh, would be significantly intensified because uh, uh, higher education took much credit for the winning of the war, uh, especially with the uh, creation and delivery of the uh, the atom bomb. Uh, the student demonstrations of 1970, uh, that changed much on campus, in particular it changed the, uh, uh, the campus in at least two or more ways. Uh, one, much more emphasis on student participation in the, uh, the governance of the university. The University Senate is an outgrowth of the demonstrations of 1970. The University Senate was distinctive because prior to then, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the prior body, uh, the uh, uh, faculty council did not include students. Uh, and uh, 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 much more attention to diversity, to minority groups, uh, than had ever been in the past, all the result of 1970. And finally, the event that uh, many of us uh, uh, lived through, uh, the advent of selective admission in 1987. That, uh, that event changed the campus by uh, uh, changing, if you will, the, uh, the difficulty of getting in, uh, the standards uh, for uh, uh, admission process, uh, and made this uh, a university that uh, uh, began moving up in the uh, rankings of U.S. News and Report, uh, World, U.S. News and World Report, which uh, uh, everybody claims to uh, uh, to not pay attention to uh, unless they do well in those rankings. So anyway, uh, that this chapter uh, refers uh, uh, goes into some depth on each of one of these uh, uh, events. Chapter four, uh, they did something great. This was the most difficult chapter for me to write. Uh, someone uh, who gave me good, who I relied on for good advice uh, uh, suggested that I want to do a chapter about uh, uh, distinguished people and alums from the university. And uh, this person suggested I should contact the deans uh, and 
uh, that turned out to be a bit of a disaster uh, because uh, A, the deans had uh, uh, limited knowledge uh, about their own college histories, uh, and B, the people they really wanted me to write about were their donors. Uh, so uh, this took about two years to write, uh, and uh, because I kept trying different, and originally uh, I kind of said, okay, I'm going to forget about the, uh, uh, the advice, and I'm going to create a listing, a database, library, uh, uh, of uh, uh, names of people, and to try to spread that uh, over the length of the university history so that I have a, a roughly equal number in different periods of time, representation uh, from different, uh, different groups, uh, different uh, fields, uh, and I, uh, I finally decided, you know, I want to keep this book popular if I can, it's going to be popular. It's not going to be popular if it's a tome. So the, uh, it's got to be a reasonable length. And I decided that you know, I can't write about 50 people. Uh, I need to limit it to 25. Uh, and so that's what I did. Uh, the subtitle is 25 people, not presidents, uh, of the uh, Ohio State University. And I uh, tried to pick a quote or two to lead off each chapter. And I like this one. This is from President Edward Orton, Jr. Uh, commencement Address, March 1928. Go forth, it's a commencement address, mind you. Go forth and take up your stewardship, strong in the will to return to humanity with good interest, all that humanity and nature have given you. Uh, rather fitting in 1928, still very useful today. So these are uh, vignettes, uh, about 25 uh, people, some are faculty, some are alums, some didn't graduate, but uh, certainly were uh, uh, impacted by uh, George Bellis, for example, uh, uh, impacted by their, their university uh, uh, years. Probably the most uh, fun-filled chapter uh, to write anyway uh, was about student life. Um, I was uh, interested in the development of student life especially as it became part of institutional culture, as much as student life can. And this was not, there was a great deal of fear at the beginning of the, uh, uh, at the origin, at the beginning of the uh, beginning years of the university, uh, because many of the faculty, of course, uh, had come from older institutions where student life involved a great deal of conflict between faculty and students uh, and administration and students. And they wanted this new university to be different from the old. And so they approached student life with uh, considerable hesitancy. Students felt differently about the whole matter. Uh, but, and this, this quote is from the student yearbook, the Macchio, in 1880. Uh, and it leaves the chapter. Student life is not as uh, might be supposed by the outsider look, 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 outside looker uh, uh, on, a, on a mere routine of reading, recitation, and physical education, of studying the rich old fields of the world, and of research into the mysteries of nature. But with this, there comes the reactionary desire for sports, joviality, and general good times. Because a man works hard in college is no reason uh, why, the Mackey, by the way, was uh, all male at this time, uh, the, 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 the writers, uh, why he should ignore college sports. Because he's tired at the end of the week does not justify him in shirking the duties of a literary society. You cannot afford to neglect them. They are as much part and parcel of your college life as your books and laboratories. All the knowledge of the world gained from books is but a small fraction and will avail you but little compared with the experience of life. Aside from that, you leave out a large factor in your enjoyment here. Uh, no doubt some students would uh, still take this uh, point of view. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, it was a, a fun uh, chapter for, uh, for me to write. The, uh, um, the presidents, like I said, they had some uh, uh, reservations. In fact, they had reservations about it. Uh, the Literary Society is mentioned in the quote. They were, in fact, the first student organizations on campus. Uh, literary societies that kept their own library, uh, more popular uh, reading. But faculty kept track of them. Uh, and at one point, 
the, uh, uh, in fact, when the first literary society was organized, the president had to be an ex officio member. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, one, at least on one occasion, perhaps more, faculty minutes, uh, the faculty warned uh, uh, the literary societies that their rooms were for the study of literature, not general socializing. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, at one point, the uh, uh, students were alarmed because the, uh, uh, they were not allowed to, uh, to dance in, uh, in University Hall. This was out of respect for the, the faculty, out of respect for uh, uh, President, uh, third uh, President uh, uh, William Henry Scott, who was a Methodist minister and uh, opposed to dancing. Uh, for later students were sensed. So uh, a lot of this uh, uh, back and forth. Uh, I want, and I want to read one, uh, one paragraph here. Uh, a seasonal source of friction between OSU officials and students were excesses of enthusiasm during and after football games. Uh, during the Ohio State Penn State game of 1912, which OSU hosted and was losing badly, OSU complained that the Penn State players were too rough. Uh, uh, an OSU freshman, uh, somebody from Toledo actually, uh, climbed a, co a goal post that displayed Penn State's colors and set them ablaze. <laughs> president Thompson, who was in the audience, uh, had to apologize to Penn State's president, who was also in the audience. Uh, uh, another example, in 1954, a victory over Michigan stirred the jubilant crowd not only to charge the goal posts, but also to attack the Michigan band, see 